So there's a whole other area of like the ankle traps, the wrist traps, where you can incorporate lapel wrestling really effectively. But before we get into that section, I have a quick word from our sponsor, myself. I'm sponsoring myself. The Lapel Encyclopedia is on sale right now with 14 chapters. If you have previously seen any of our content, you know that we constantly update the Lapel Encyclopedia for a one-time price. You buy it once, you get all of the updates in the future for absolutely free. So go check it out right now. You can also pick up one of these nifty shirts as well. Keep watching this video and I'll educate you. I'm gonna show you a little bit of the mind games that occur now once you get good at worm wrestling. When you're wrestling with someone and you start threatening those lapel passive and those lapel passes and you're able to just pop up to your feet really quickly and immediately change the dynamic of your guard attack from a pulling uh, technical setup to take backs and you know take people's arms for arm bars and things like that to suddenly going forward and being incredibly threatening with wrestling positions with these super reinforced lapel grips, your opponent has to like think about two things now because if he sits too far back you might just come up on the leg really fast. And if he goes too far forward, then he's falling into the worm guard attacks that have been so successful for so long. So it's worm wrestling is kind of the missing link of dealing with people who stall against the lapel. So now, every time I touch a lapel, I've doubled my threats to my opponent, okay? Because it's no longer me just pulling into lapel guard positions where they're just trying to escape. Any backwards movement he makes is going to expose him for worm wrestling, even starting from standing right here. If he starts trying to like sit his hips back or pull at his lapel to like get it back, all I have to do is just shoot in and grab the leg, pass him under the lapel, and now I've bypassed my ability or my need to even set this up from worm guard just based off the fear of the lapel alone. If he gives me the lapel, maybe I won't shoot because his arms are engaged and ready to like block my shots because he's not worried about the lapel. In that case, I'm pulling guard. That would be the proper movement. I have a free shot to pull to my lapel guards. I can start setting up my positions and do all of those things that people have come to fear, okay? So some of the mind games that come in is here. If I reach for his leg, what can he really counter with? He can only just defend and back up. So just grabbing the lapel has put a threat on my opponent because he has to respect this grip that I've grabbed. People used to laugh at this grip. You get this grip, they didn't, they didn't care. What was I going to do with this? Well, now there's this arsenal of attacks. Offensive, defensive, guard, wrestling, passing. You can literally do all of jiu-jitsu with a lapel, okay? So now, when I pull guard, that same principle applies. If I start to try and sit back like this and he stuffs my legs as I'm trying to go for a worm guard setup, sure, I can't get worm guard, but I no longer have to flounder and try and get to worm guard only or lapel guard only. I can sit up right to here. I'm in the LBP, the lapel base position. This, very powerful. I can stand up, start attacking my single legs. I can switch, start playing the half guard game, the half guard worm wrestling game, things of that nature, okay? So what I like to do is sometimes I'll, be ha I'll have the lapel here and I'll go to set up my worm guard position this looks like worm guard. He's not thinking I'm gonna come up in a wrestling position right here. This transition of the grip itself, he's thinking, shit, I don't want him to get worm guard. So he's gonna stand up. What do you think this exposes him for? Freaking getting double legged or something, dude. I can get right up, start driving someone over without having to use any real strength. Just off the threat alone, I put his body out of, out of a defensive position that I can't, take him down with, but he stands up to avoid the lapel, now he's exposed to a, a wrestling position. If I'm here and he starts standing up straight and I go to set up my wrestling position and he goes to a knee or like tries to drive into me, I can transition right back to worm. Because what does worm do best against? Knee cut pressure. And what does he have to do to counter my wrestling? He has to put knee cut pressure. So let's just illustrate that real fast. It would be, it would be a triple flip flop. So here, Threaten worm, he stands up straight. Threaten wrestling, he knee cuts. Now, guaranteed worm, guaranteed reverse Della worm, and I can do my worm attacks, all because now I have alternate pathways. The forward wrestling pathway, the backwards lapel guard pathway. Okay, so that's kind of how those things mix together and how you can use them in your lapel guard game to no longer just be 
limited to the guards. You can just choose to change the position. If it's not working out for you, you're getting stalled out, just turn it into the wrestling match. Try your hand at that. If they bring you back down, go right back into the worm guard position. Very effective. 